NCAA denied all winter sport athletes the option to compete in extra season. And because of that, that left wrestlers with a feeling of emptiness in their stomach. In this video, I'm going to tell you which wrestlers were impacted the most by this decision. So let's stop stalling and start talking wrestling. What's going on wrestling fans? My name is Josiah and welcome to Fanco Wrestling. And the NCAA just recently made this decision which was very unfortunate for all the wrestlers who qualified for the NCAA tournament this year which of course was canceled due to the coronavirus pandemic. Now whether you agree with the decision, whether you disagree with the decision, you, you have to admit that it's controversial and that it's upsetting for these wrestlers who did qualify for the tournament, especially the seniors who will never get another chance to compete. Now, the first thing that I want to say at the beginning of this video is every wrestler who qualified for the NCAA tournament was impacted by this. There's nobody who, you know, this isn't meant to be like a ranking series or anything like that where I'm saying this guy had the worst impact. I'm just giving some light to certain situations that some guys were in and that was very unfortunate to see these stories in, in their lives played out this way. Now, first of all, some of the people that were affected are the guys gunning for another title. You look at guys like Vincenzo Joseph, uh, a senior now who is a two-timer, was looking for his third title. You look at a Mark Hall, who has been denied the past couple of seasons uh, from Z uh, Zahid Valencia beating him in the NCAA Finals. Seth Gross, who wasn't able to compete last year, he's looking for another title. Then, of course, you have Spencer Lee, who, you know, is, is only a junior, but still, you know, he wants to become a four-timer. Then you look at just all these other national contenders. You look at these All-American contenders and a Dylan Lighty. You look at a Chaz Tucker who is undefeated this season. Chaz Tucker of Cornell, 133 pounds, undefeated, coming into the tournament. Obviously a threat for the title. Uh, Lighty made the round of 12 last year, the round of 12 the year before. He was never an All-American. This year is the number four seed coming into the tournament. It's just very, very unfortunate that this is, you know, what happened. So who are the wrestlers who have been the most impacted? Well, uh, the first two I'm going to throw out as kind of honorable mentions before I get into the three wrestlers who I think were impacted the most by this decision. Uh, first of all, Luke Pletcher is a, is a guy who had his first real shot at a title this year. You know, he's been denied in the past at 133, but moving up to 141 pounds this year, he has been the dominant force in the weight. Yes, you have Nick Lee. Yes, you have Dom Demas. I mean, it, 141 was a tough weight, but he has been that, that force at the top. And he lost to Nick Lee earlier on the season, but he avenged that loss at Big Tens and was coming into the national tournament looking very strong. He has All-American in the past. He's placed fourth twice, but really this year he's looking for that first title. It's unfortunate that he's not going to get that. The other guy here is Taylor Lujan. Taylor Lujan of UNI, the 184 pounder, made the round of 16 his freshman year. Then the last two years made the round of 12, which is also known as the blood round. And so that meant that he lost in that, didn't All-American. This was the first year he was possibly going to become an All-American. He came in as the number one seed, 28-2, and two, only with losses to Hunter Bowen and Trent Hidley. And now it's unfortunate that we don't get to see these things played out. Now, the first guy, I kind of already mentioned him uh, that I think was impacted heavily by this, and that is Spencer Lee. Spencer Lee is impacted. Yes, he's only a junior. Uh, he, and he is a two-time national champion already. However, it's unfortunate that, you know, people talk, when they say Spencer Lee, you hear a four-timer, four-timer, four-timer. From the time he was a freshman until now when he's had two national titles under his belt, and now he's never going to get the chance to become a four-timer. Now, with all this discretion advised, I mean, Spencer Lee could have lost this tournament, same as all these other guys. Nobody's saying that they would have won. It's just what could have been, you know? We'll never know what could have been. But Spencer Lee, this season was undefeated, 18-0. Uh, the recent Hodge Trophy winner for the 2020 season. Uh, looking back at his past seasons, I mean... In his freshman year, he had a, a great season, but he did have a couple losses in there. Then he came to the national tournament, came into his own. He pinned Nick Piccinini. Then he pinned NATO, uh, Nathan Tomasello of Ohio State in the semifinals, who he had lost to earlier on in the season. 
and then he ended up beating Nick Suriano in the finals to claim his first title. Then next year, his sophomore year, which was last year, he defeated Nick Piccinini, who he avenged that loss to uh, in the semifinals. Then he ended up beating Jack Mueller in the finals, who was undefeated. Now, the reason that this is you know unfortunate is... Uh, he's he's not ever going to be up there in the ranks with these four timers, such as Kyle Dake, such as Logan Stever, Pat Smith, and Kale Sanderson. The four only four timers in NCAA wrestling history. Now listen, if Spencer Lee does win that third title, uh, which I think is likely, he's still going to be up there in the ranks with them. But now he's going to be he's going to be a three timer. Which I mean, to win three national titles is unbelievable. I mean, he'll be in the ranks with Zane Rutherford, Kyle Snyder, Jaden Cox, uh, and Bo Nickel, Jason Nolf, all recent winners, then older winners such as Dan Hodds, such as Barry Davis, Nate Carr, I mean, Tom Brands. These are all three-timers who especially will be in the ranks with if he wins. So, you know, it's unfortunate that he was denied that year uh, to become a four-time national champion. The second guy who I believe was impacted heavily was Matt Kolodzik of Princeton. He was a senior at 149 pounds, and yes, this was a loaded weight this year with Pat Lugo, Simi Sasso, Matt Kolodzik. It was a tough weight class. Now, the reason this is so detrimental and so unfortunate for him is he was taking originally this year an Olympic red shirt. So he's taking an Olympic red shirt year. Then he decided to pull that red shirt in February, help his team defeat Cornell and win an EIWA uh, title, dual meet title, and ended up now not even able to compete in the national tournament. He pulled his red shirt in the last month of the season and he was undefeated, uh, and it's just so unfortunate to see this situation happen. And this was he; it was a real he was a real threat for the title this year. You know, in the past, the last couple of years, you look at his freshman year. He lost to Ronnie Perry at, uh, from Lock Haven, who was just really on fire that year uh, as a freshman, and in, in, or excuse me, as a sophomore. Whenever he took third, and his uh, last year, whenever he was a junior, he took fifth. He lost to Anthony Ashnold, who, of course, was the uh, NCAA champion, as well as Mitch Feinsilver. Two tough losses, but at that point in the season, uh, Kologic was the number one at that point in the season. Uh, you know, number one, number two, he kind of flip flopped. But, you know, this year he comes in undefeated. 14-0, and 0, EIWA champion, one of the top seeds at the national tournament, is a real uh, threat for the title, and now unfortunately is not able to see those dreams of becoming a national champion come true. And, you know, his situation is, like many others, very, very unfortunate, uh, but very impactful for him. And the third guy who's impacting the most has to be Colin Moore. Colin Moore this was his year. And, you know, to be fair, uh, being a Penn State fan myself, I haven't been like a huge fan of Colin Moore in the past. I, I you know, I, I enjoy watching him wrestling, but I, I typically root against him. But this year, something had changed. Something had changed in me where I, I kind of started to root for Colin Moore. And I think it was kind of what by the Big Ten Network, they started putting out these uh, little you know, personal interviews with guys and talking with Colin Moore about how tough of a career he's had on his road to a title and just how he's dealt with that. And, and he's dealt with that better than most people could have dealt with that. And, you know, that is why I, I've really shifted his side. But as far as him, this year, Cliff Keen, Las Vegas champion, Big Ten champion, and he's out here majoring, tech falling, tough guys, you know, in, in talking about rivals, Ohio State and Penn State, he majored Shakur Rashid this year in the Penn State duel. But I think that this is so difficult for him because he's been through so much. You look at his freshman year, he comes in impressive season as a freshman with placing third place uh, in 2017. He was 33-4 and four on the season with a loss to Jaden Cox, who you may well know, as well as to Brett Farr, who he lost to, I believe, three times throughout the season. And Brett Farr later went on to make the national finals, losing to Jaden Cox. Um, but, you know, it, it just a tough bracket. But, I mean, placing third as a freshman is impressive. The next year, 2018, was the his infamous tournament. Uh, very unfortunate for him whenever he lost to Kyle Cannell in, at the NCAA tournament early on. 
Um, you know, as the number one seed, lost by first period fall, and then ended up losing uh, later on in the WrestleBacks by five to three decision. Ended up taking, uh, ended up taking fourth that year. The other thing is, you know, during that season, he lost to Mike Machiavello during the duel, who ended up winning the national title that year from NC State, as well as losing to Anthony Cassar. I mean, these were just all upsets that nobody really saw, nobody expected to happen. And then at the Nationals, like I said, with Kyle Canal, him losing, uh, more losing to him was just like, it was difficult because the whole stadium was almost rooting against him. The whole arena was rooting against him just because it was an upset and, and fans like to see upsets. And then, of course, last year was difficult for him because Bo Nickel moved up. He had Bo Nickel in his weight the entire season, had three losses to him, his only three losses on the year. Uh, he was 23-3 and on the season. And he ended up getting pinned by Bo earlier on, then majored, and then ended up losing in the finals just by a decision 5-3, to three, but a very difficult, difficult season. This year, though, was supposed to be Colin Moore's year. 27-0, and 0, undefeated, a Hodge Trophy contender, and easily a national title contender. Now, would Moore, would Kolodzik, would Spencer Lee have all won titles? We don't know, and it's just unfortunate to see what what happened and what this decision has come to. Please let me know what you think in the comments below. Who do you think is impacted most by this decision?